Hey everybody, welcome back to Big Red EDC. Well today, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to kind of go over some of the things that I've learned about uh, the 2020 releases from CRKT. Now, um, in all fairness, um, pro and con, I've only seen these three that are sitting in front of you, and that is... It's not a large sample size. They had several, several new models come out for 2020. But these were the three that I chose from right off the bat to take a look at. And some of the other reviewers out there have taken a look at um, the same. I know JT did the, the Tuna and several guys have done the Pete and the Theros. That was another one that I really, really liked the look of, but... Man, this little bugger just kind of caught my attention, so I went with it instead of the Theros. So, I'm going to start out. I'm, I've got five things. Five things that I kind of want to discuss. And the first one, the first thing I learned is that CRKT continues to work with some of the most incredible designers in, in the knife community, in the knife world. I mean, you've got three of them right there on the table in front of you. I mean, you've got Eric Oaks, Jesper Vaknes, and Lucas Burnley. Three terrific designers. I mean, and not to mention designers like Brian Ty, Ken Onion, Flavio Acoma, Richard Rod. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. They work with some absolutely fantastic designers. And I think that's absolutely wonderful because we get to see what's in the mind of the, the, the designers and the create the creativity that comes from it. Um, for me, that's particularly particularly evident in the Shehalem from Eric Oaks, the the hammered the hammered stainless steel. I mean, it just, <clears throat> excuse me, it just reminds me of that buckshot bone type look that you see on some traditional knives. Absolutely, that is definitely what grabbed my attention on this knife especially. Was just that type of design, design ideas, okay? Now it kind of flows into the second thing I learned. Quality. There's things about some of these knives, not all, not all of, of these three, but unfortunately the Shehalem is the one that comes to mind right off the bat is, uh, yeah, I might, I might make some people not too happy about this, but that's okay, because it's the truth. Well, it's my truth. So, the Shehalem in particular feels to me like, well, it kind of feels like an unfinished knife. I know I pointed out in my review, I've done reviews on all of these. The forward finger toil, it still has that fresh stamped feeling on there. No attention has really, it doesn't feel like any attention has been paid to it to, you know, to knock it down and knock that you know, that stamped edge off of it. I mean, and you can even kind of see it there. I mean, you see where it's grabbed the the skin, you know, off the flakes of skin off my finger. If I can see, there you go. See, it's an unfinished edge. That and the fact that this little guy right here, one of the guys at work thought he cut himself on the blade, but I knew he didn't because his finger was nowhere near the blade. And this point... Is what got him. Are those things that can be fixed? Of course. Without a doubt. You know, you get a little emery cloth or something, they'll probably take care of that without even blinking an eye. But I kind of already mentioned it in my video with the Pete, is I, when I purchase a knife, I am purchasing what I assume is a finished product. And the Shehalem just doesn't feel like that to me. 
it doesn't feel like a finished product. So I know in my Pete video, I was like, I don't work for CRKT. I shouldn't be doing the finish work on the knife. And I, I do believe that. I believe that wholeheartedly. A knife should come without any modification needed. Now, do we know that to be the case all the time? No, it's not the case all the time. It happens. And you know what? This knife could be the only one off the assembly line that's like that. I don't know. This is the only one I, I've seen. So if you have a Shehala, please let me know down in the comments. Did you have that feeling? Did you think it needed anything like that? Please. I'm, I'm not here. I'm definitely not trying to bash CRKT. That's not what this is about. I'm just trying to give you the picture that I have in my head. That's it. So the Pete, the Pete was pretty good. I think it's pretty much, it is what it's supposed to be. A lightweight, light use knife. Um, the only really thing I had to that is there again, the inside of the, the inside of the, what is it? GRN, I believe, if I remember correctly. It, it doesn't, it just doesn't feel. It's not finished. It doesn't have any attention paid to it. So, that, that kind of, yeah, I mean, is it a big deal? No, it's not a huge deal. It can be fixed. But, should it need to be fixed? Should I need to fix it? I don't believe so. That's just me. Now, that kind of that kind of finishes up that number two. Number three is budget. Now, this is one that's kind of, it's pretty subjective, to be perfectly honest with you. Because my idea of budget and your idea of budget may be two completely different, it, they could be completely opposites, polar opposites. You know, you may think a budget knife is less than $20. I may think a budget knife is less than $100, and that's okay, because it fits both of our perspectives. You know, some people aren't going to spend more than $50 on a knife. They just don't. They don't believe they need to. That's fine. You know, some people won't spend less than $100 on a knife. You know, it's, it's such a wide, wide topic. But my particular thoughts about budget, we have three knives in front of us. We have about $28, $28, and right around 45, 43 to 45, depending on where you look. You know, and these are like 27, 28. Is that a budget knife? Um, to me, it is, and it's supposed to be. I really believe these are supposed to be budget knives. But where my idea of budget comes in is there's budget and there's value. And to me, those are two completely separate. I may think budget is less than $100. But if somebody is selling a knife, you know, with the materials, you know, that I don't believe to be of good value, well, then it doesn't make sense to me. And for, these are all 8CR13 blades, do not have an issue with 8CR13 at all. I don't have a, I don't have an issue with any blade steel, as long as it's priced correctly. Now these two, you know, 27, $28, they're close. They're close. This one, 8CR13 and G10, 
for approaching that $50 mark, uh, I not seeing the value. I'm not. By the way, I think, just so we're, we clear this up, I'm pretty sure the tuna right here is my favorite of the three. Because that's really about the only issue I have with the tuna. Is this price. I love the design. I like the design of all three, to be perfectly honest with you. The GRN on the P, mm, not overly crazy about it. Just the feel and stuff, but it's okay. But the value, I'm not finding the value in the tuna. Almost $50 for an 8CR13 and G10. There are so many other options with the quote-unquote better blade steel out there that there's much better options on the market. And this is going to play into my fourth, fourth point a little bit. But my, my feeling is, why are these knives priced the way they are? Well, goes back to point number one. CRKT works with a lot of fantastic designers. Well, those designers have to get paid for their designs. So, that is my belief. That are why the knives are priced the way they are with the materials that they use. And trust me, with the designers, yeah, trust me, they need to get their end of the deal. That's what they do for a living, is design knives. But my fourth point, when it rolls in, is I try not to watch any other reviews on these knives because I don't want it to skew my opinion. Okay, but after I was done... And I went through all of them. Uh, I saw it just happened that JT's video popped up on the tuna. From JT's Knife Life. I was like, okay, I'm done. My opinion's been made. I'm going to watch JT's video. Because JT likes him some CRKT. And I was like, this is going to be a great video to watch. I can see if mine, you know, if I'm out of left field, you know, in comparison to JT or what he thinks. So I watched it. And he put it absolutely perfectly with the tuna, for sure, because that's the review I was watching. But he called the tuna a missed opportunity. And I believe that is the absolute perfect way to describe the tuna is a missed opportunity. And he goes into things like blade steel. Again, if they would bump, if they would have bumped up the blade steel to, I don't know, maybe even 9CR18. You know, or potentially 14C28. Something like that. Would it justify... I think it would be more in the ballpark at the price they're asking. I absolutely believe that. But like I said, he put it as a missed opportunity and that was just, it was, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant way to describe and really it's a brilliant way to describe all three of the ones that I have. Not so much the Pete because I think the Pete is what it is. You know, we can sit here and haggle, haggle price all day long because, I mean, it's just, we can. It's a fact. But it's just, yeah. Yeah, a, a missed a, a missed opportunity. JT, if you watch this, I don't know if you will, but that was brilliant, my friend. A perfect, perfect way to describe these three for sure, 
And I hope it's not the way to describe a multitude of the new releases from CRKT. And you have to understand, this just doesn't extend from these three knives. This is going back. This has been building in for me with CRKT for a long, long time. I reviewed the Rip Snort uh, towards the end of last year, I believe it was. <sighs> I, I hate to say it, but that knife was fairly atrocious, in my opinion. The, you know, it had the big metal, it had the metal pommel, stainless pommel, all around it, um, the the material, I for, even forget, it was some sort of polymer. The handle material was just as slick as slick could be. That it had the whole, the whole liners and pommel had that freshly stamped feeling to it. There was no attention paid to it whatsoever, or it sure didn't feel like it. The liners were sticky, and it's just, I don't understand that. Yes, it's a U.S. company. These knives are made in China. We see knives come out of China all the time that do not have those issues at all. Best tech. Kubi, for goodness sakes. I mean, artisan. So many knives coming out of, that, that come from China, just like these did. But the value is... In my mind, the value is so much more in those knives than in, in these. It, it And it, to be perfectly honest with you guys, it almost hurts to say that. It really does. Because CRKT is a U.S. company that I want to get behind. But they need me to give me something to get behind. So my fifth and final point... Basically, it comes down to price and, you know, to be perfectly honest with you guys, it's getting to the point where I just can't justify spending money on a CRKT knife anymore. I bought these three knives. I wanted to get them. And if you saw my video on, or my unboxing of the three, you, you remember that that wasn't necessarily an easy feat as it should have been. But anyway... I, I just, I really can't. I can't see spending any more money on a CRKT knife until they do something to prove me wrong. Or to, that's not, that's not the right way to put it, prove me wrong. To change my mind, that's a better way of putting it. To change my mind. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much what I learned from... The three knives, the three new knives that I bought out of the CRKT 2020 release. I I hope I'm wrong about the rest of them. I really wanted to see some of the other ones. But like I said, I, I can't justify really even spending my own money on it. Because I'm going to turn around and sell them. I'm going to sell all three of these knives. Pretty sure of it anyway. And what I would sell them for is probably what I should have bought them for to begin with. Because if I sell them for any more than that, I'd almost feel like I was cheating somebody. And I hate to say that too, but that's the way I feel. You know, and I was just looking at, what was it, the APOC? Because man, I was like, oh, I've got to try. I've got to try. I should try another one. I really should and I got to looking at it, and I'm pretty sure that one's an Eric Oaks design as well. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure it is. That one looked like a really cool knife. There again, 56 bucks for an 8CR13 knife. Yeah, it looks really cool, but is the value there? I don't know. I don't know if it is or not. And... I don't know if I really want to take the chance of it not being there, to be perfectly honest with you. But, sorry guys, I've been rambling for 20 minutes. I apologize, I didn't mean this for to go long, this long. I hope you stuck with me. You know, if you think I'm way off base, you know what, that's fine. Because this is just my opinion. 
But I want you to know where I'm coming from. And if you think, hey, why hasn't Big Red done any CRKT knives recently? Well, unless somebody loans me one or I get one on the pass around, I'm probably not going to do one for a while. And you know what? If you've got one of the new models and you would like to send it to me for me to check out, you know what? I would greatly appreciate that. Without a doubt. I would absolutely love that. So, it's 20 minutes, guys. I got to get off here. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think. Positive, negative, doesn't matter. It's fine. You know, as long as you're nice about it, we're good. If you're not so nice about it, it might your comment might not stick around so long. But that's okay too. But anyway, guys, thank you very much again. As always, like, subscribe, leave me a comment. You know I love talking to y'all. Until next time, I'll talk to y'all later, guys. Bye-bye.